All right, let's talk about uh, a member of the Atlanta Falcons now, Jeff Akuda. Why didn't, why hasn't he worked yet at the NFL level? And I think I made a video like this last year, but there's obviously more to talk about this year. Last year, he only had one season really of tape. This year, he has a second year and, uh, you know, the best year of his career for sure. He didn't play great. I didn't think, uh, in this season, but he at least showed that he is an NFL caliber corner. Uh, but let's talk about kind of, you know, what, why he was so hyped up, why he ended up going number three overall, which is very high for a corner. That's higher than Sauce Gardner went, who, you know, took the world by storm this year and, and why it didn't work out so well. So first let's start off, uh, we're going to watch some college tape and then we're going to watch some NFL tape and kind of compare the two. First, you know, I wanted to just watch actually some highlights of Akuda. What were the main things people talked about? And one of those things was, uh, you know, sort of plays like this, where it's going to be a screen pass, and watch how when the quarterback takes a snap and flips it to a receiver, Akuda's able to quickly rush in and make a tackle for no gain, and really, Akuda has still been great at this kind of stuff. This is something that is definitely a benefit of Akuda's game, and it was something that was talked about a lot when he got drafted, is his ability to come in and make tackles and do things like that. He's a great run-stopping uh, corner, uh, and he's great at those types of plays, which has made me wonder at times, should he just play safety? Should you just have him stop playing corner altogether? Use his skill set in a way that kind of works better because, you know, listen, this is a, something that was considered a major benefit coming out of college, and it has been a ma major benefit for him. It really has. But he also had stuff like this, where the guy who uh, Akuda is covering on this play is it's man coverage, and the player he's supposed to cover uh, ha has gone in motion towards the other side of the field. And you see now there's a pretty big gap between where Akuda is and where the player he's trying to cover is. So when the ball is snapped, this is going to be a bit of a rollout, and you see that there is definitely a bit of space right here. So so, you know, this is a bit of a tough situation for Akuda, you would think, and on a fourth down and four, it's a very key play. However, watch Akuda be able to rush in, and he does knock that ball away. That's a really good uh, closing speed by Akuda. He does come back to the ball very well, has very good ball skills, and he was able to come in and make plays like that. Now, one thing that just has to be noted right off the top is that he's not the fastest corner. Ran kind of a high four fours, which isn't bad necessarily. Like usually as long as you can clear four five, you're all right, but it's certainly not great either. And I do think that in the NFL, it has gotten him into a little bit more trouble where he hasn't been able to keep up with some of the faster receivers, or if he gets a step out of position, he doesn't have the comeback speed, and if he's a step behind someone, sometimes he just remains a step behind them, whereas in college, he was able to make plays like this because the quarterbacks didn't have as big of arms and because the receivers weren't quite as fast. But now again, let's go to the NFL, and let's talk about his last season, which was his best year, right? Where he, where he showed, oh no, he is actually an NFL caliber player. This is going to be a, what's essentially a one-on-one -on -one matchup right here. It's going to be, uh, but what's worth noting is it's a cover two zone. And I think you saw that when Akuda was at his best, he had safety help deep. He didn't have to worry about his lack of speed and getting beat down the field. Uh, you, he could kind of just, again, do what he does well, where in this situation, while it's kind of a disguise, it looks like it's going to to be cover three, it's going to end up being cover two, and the reality is he doesn't have to cover more than 15 yards down the field. He's going to be able to be in position to make a play. So as you see, right when this play begins, you see that there's, uh, you know, a CeeDee Lamb starts to cut, but Akuda is currently in position because, again, he didn't have to give up a ton of space. He didn't have to play 10 yards down the field out of fear that, uh, you know, there could be a, a deep route coming and he'd be in trouble. So because of this, now he can kind of do what he does well. Prescott's going to make this throw and it's actually going to be complete, but Akuda gives up nothing there, uh, maybe a yard or two, but that's a play you'll take every day from your corner, and a legitimately impressive play from Akuda once that ball was thrown. These are the kind of things that Akuda is capable of, and if you can use him correctly, I do think there might be value in someone like Akuda. I don't know how much value, uh, and so I get why he only went for a fifth round pick, especially one, listen, when you're drafted third overall, you get paid a pretty good amount of money, so the Lions are saving some money by getting rid of him. That's part of what they're doing here. But at the same time, you know, 
I do see that there is some value in Akuda, and for a team like the Falcons, who I think realistically know they're probably a year away uh, or in a rebuilding season, who knows, every now and then a team is in a rebuilding season, and the rebuild is quick, uh, and they're able to be competitive right away, but I think realistically the Falcons know this is probably going to be a bit of a, a process uh, to get good, so for Akuda. It's kind of like a flyer where if he ends up working out and you know how to use him, well, then you kind of get are the first team that can try to extend him and stuff like that. Uh, and if he ends up not being uh, great, well, then, okay, whatever. You, you, you know, wasted $10 million on a player who only played for one season. It's just a complete flyer. But again, there were still instances of plays like this. And the reality is, in the NFL, yes, two safety deep coverages have taken the world by storm. But every team still runs a fair number of single safety deep coverages. And you need a corner who can come through. This is Akuda going up against Alan Lazard, who, again... Let's keep in mind for the uh, Packers, a big reason why they had their midseason struggles was because, you know, they couldn't win on the outside. The receivers couldn't, you know, win their one-on-ones down there, and they were, were relying on Alan Lazard, who wasn't able to win there consistently, and it wasn't until Christian Watson was put on the outside and he was able to win consistently did their season kind of turn around. But anyway, you see on this play, you know, uh, Lazard's going to get to the outside, and I actually think Okuda's doing a pretty solid job right here. He's using his, uh, you know, body to create some contact, and then he's going to try and just stay with Lazard. However, Okuda's going to eventually uh, hit the deck. Uh, it kind of looks like it's pass interference, but I've looked at other angles, and I don't think it was... If it was, I don't think it was actually that significant. I think Akuda just couldn't get his head turned around and then kind of got, uh, you know, uh, sort of fell over a little bit. And maybe there was some contact on Lazard as well. But the reality is, I'm just showing this play to show that uh, too often last season, you saw the Lions, uh, you know, in really too often throughout Akuda's career, I should say, when he was in these situations, it left something to be desired. And I think that's a big part of why the Lions decided to move off of him is they just don't feel as though he's a complete cornerback, which to re the reality is he's just not. He's not a complete cornerback. But at the same time, you know, I think about some other guys who weren't complete cornerbacks. Richard Sherman, I don't know if he ever could have been a, an elite man coverage corner, but that's just not how he was ever used, and so he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. I'm not saying Akuda can be Richard Sherman. I'm just saying that just because you're not a complete player doesn't mean you're an invaluable player. And for the Falcons, it makes me wonder, are they going to kind of use him as a cover two corner, which to me, I think is the perfect fit for him and how it could really work out, or maybe even have him just play in uh, the nickel, which I think would be a great situation as well. He doesn't have to be an outside corner. Put him as a nickel guy, and then you can even have him, you know, around the middle of the field where you can take advantage of his great tackling ability and his great run stuffing ability. That makes sense to me, and that's probably how I would want to use Akuda if I was a team that just traded for him. So is that what the Lions are going to do? There's really, or excuse me, is that what the Falcons are going to do? There's really no way to know for sure. But personally, why hasn't Akuda lived up to the hype? Well, again, it, part of it all comes down to with, with me is speed with corners. That's often the most overlooked thing when you're evaluating corners. People pay attention to speed, but like the reality is a lot of bust, you know, it's it's the best predictor of success when you're drafted in the first round is speed. That's a better predictor than, than even when you were drafted in the first round, just looking at speed because it happens where guys, you know, can't get away with what, with what they can get away with in college and don't really have ways to adjust. Doesn't happen all the time, but you know, sometimes guys aren't over Overly fast and it's a real concern and uh you know for Akuda the fact that he isn't overly fast hasn't killed his NFL career but so far has made it a lot more difficult for him to become a star player and we'll see if the Falcons can maybe use him right and figure out a way to still make him a, an effective player which I think he still could be in the right situation those are my thoughts on Akuda what are yours let me know in the comments below always love hearing from you and of course as always thanks for watching